In this video, we're going to take the tables that we made in the previous two videos. That's the names table and the books table. And we're going to make a third table so that this library database actually works like a database. Now, in the meantime, since you've watched the last video, what I've gone and done is tidied up the books table, make it look a little bit nicer. And I've thrown in 10 records of some popular books, which are all over here. Now you can see that each book has its own unique book number, has its name and the author and the cover. Now we have to remember that in a real library, for example, if we take a Harry Potter book, they're not going to have one copy, but possibly 10 or even more of those books in the library because they're so popular. In that case, the book name will be exactly the same. The author will be exactly the same but each book will get its own unique book number. And this is really important for us to remember in that a database stores the information that we want. On the other hand, if we go and have a look at our names, we can see that we have a whole bunch of names in here. Now let's say, for example, I get Robert Downey coming in, becoming a member of my library and getting this as his library number. Now, if tomorrow another person with the same name, Robert Downey, walks in, he can join the library, but this Robert Downey's library number will be different. And this is a really important point I want to make, is that in a database, each record... Now, if I click over here to the Excel view, you can see that each one of the names is a separate record, or should I say a row. Each row is a separate record. In a database, Every row must be unique in some way. So even if I have 10 people called Robert Downey who all have the same name, they must all have different library numbers. And that is the way that we would tell the difference between Robert Downey 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so on. Each one of them must have a unique library number. Equally, if we go to the books into our Excel view, you can see that each book has its own number. And like I mentioned before, it doesn't matter how many copies of a book I have, every single book must have its own unique book number. And that way we can figure out which book has been borrowed by which person. Now let's reset our views back to where they look like this. In this video, we're going to make a third table. So let's do that right now. Edit layout, manage database. We're going to go to our tables tab and we're going to immediately just type out a new one, which is called borrowing. A borrowing, obviously, is when somebody takes a book out of my library and I need to figure out which book has been borrowed by which person. Let's create that table. And in the fields, what I'm going to do is put a field called library number, make that a number, and I'm going to have a book number, which is also a number. Now, you might be looking at the screen and thinking, well, hold on. The names has a library number in it and the books has a book number in it. So why are we writing the same field in this third table? And there's going to be a reason for that and we'll figure that out in a couple of minutes. Let's just add a few more. We're going to add date borrowed. We're going to make that a date field. We're going to create that. And lastly, we're going to do date returned like this, which is also again a date and we're going to create that. Now if we press OK, go up to the layout and go to the new one that's called borrowing. Obviously you should be used to this by now. It's going to look kind of boring and black and white. So I'm just going to pause the video here and when you come back it will look at least a little bit better. Now in the meantime, what I've done is just change the colors of this borrowed books table. We've got all the fields that we started with, which was the library number, the book number, the date borrowed and the date returned. Now, if we go through what a librarian would do if I borrowed a book, if I go to exit layout, what would happen every single time a book was borrowed is a new record would be made. I would then take the library number of the person borrowing the book. I would then scan in the number of the book itself, that's the barcode, and then write the date that it was borrowed, which is today. Now, if you have a look at this database right now, it's kind of useless because going back to our books, 
If you have a look, the books just have a serial number which is four digits, one, 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 and so on. If we go to the names, they have a much longer serial number. But if we now look at our borrowing table, it's going to be really difficult to figure out who 10005 is and which book is 1115, like this. Because nothing on the screen is telling us which book this is and which library number this is. So before we go any further, we're going to go back to Edit Layout. We're going to go back to Manage and Database. And this time, we're going to actually click on this Relationships tab. It's the first time we've done this. Now, if you have a look at what we have here, we have our names, we have our books, and we have our borrowing tables. All three of the tables that we made over here are now sitting in Relationships. And what we're going to do is we're going to, with our mouse, click on Library Number, go up to the names and say, I'm going to link these two fields together. So library number from names is now linked to library number from borrowing. I'm going to go again to the borrowing, click on book number, and drag one of these links or relationships to the book number in books. Now what this actually means, that when I type something in the borrowing table, and that's just sitting underneath it, if I type in a library number, what it's going to do is it's going to go up this relationship to this table called names and say, is there anybody in that table who has that library number? Equally, when I type in a book number, it's going to go up this relationship to this table over here. And it's going to say, are there any books that have that particular book number? I'm going to press OK to this. Nothing's really changed on my screen. What I'm going to do is just move my inspector out of the way. And what I'm going to do is go to this thing called the field picker. Over here, it's saying, what field do I want to put inside this layout over here? I'm going to go to where it says current table and click there. Now what you can see is that rather than just having borrowing, I've got these things called related or relationship tables. I'm going to go to where it says names. And what I'm going to say is, when I type in somebody's library number, I would like to see their first name and their surname. Now, don't worry about the difference in the field and the way it looks. We're going to fix that in a second. While I'm still here, I'm going to again go up here and go to the related table of books. And what I'm going to say is, when I type in a book number, I would like to know the book's name the author's name, and even the book cover, because of course that makes it really easy to see which book somebody has borrowed. Now what we'll do very quickly is just tidy up everything that we see on the screen. As you can see, it's quite crowded, so I'm just going to reduce the sizes, move some stuff around very quickly so that we can get going with this. Now, how do we fix a problem like this when we have all of our fonts set and then we put in a field and it looks completely different. Well, for that, there is a really simple solution. So what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to take something that I like, click on it. I'm going to go up to this little pipette, this little dropper. I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to put that style over there. And you can see we can copy a style from one place and paste it on another. So again, I'm going to do that. Click on something I like, click on the dropper, and then just click on a field I want to change. And very quickly, we can just kind of move some stuff around and have it looking exactly the way we want. So I'll just take two seconds to do that, like so. I can draw around fields like this so I don't have to do it one by one. So I can very simply and very quickly change the style of everything on my page to exactly what it should look like. So let's just move some stuff around like this. And what's going to happen now just fix the book cover and we can talk about what's going to happen now it's not perfect but it will do for now so now when I exit the layout what you'll see is library number one zero 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 five is actually Scarlett Johansson the book number one 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 five is actually Charlie and the chocolate factory let me just fix that we had that same problem 
in the other layer and I fix that just by dragging that field to two lines. Let's exit that layout and you can see now every time somebody borrows a book and I'm going to show you that one more time, we're going to go to a new record. The person borrowing a book is 100003 like that and you can see that's Gal Gadot's number and the book number she's borrowing is 1112 and you can see that's Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So you can see just how powerful this is. So rather than having to copy and paste information from one table to another, all we have to do is make a relationship between tables and then we can use little bits of information to get everything from that table out. So all we need is a library number and because of that relationship it's going to go into the names table and figure out whose number that is and give me their first and second name. Equally, the same relationship is going to look at the book number in the books table and then figure out what the name of that book number is, what the author is, and the book cover. So you can see that using three tables, we've made quite a powerful system. In one of those tables, we just collect the names of the people in our library. In a second table, we collect all the books that we've got sitting in our library. And in that third table, we can now combine the first table and the second table to figure out who's borrowed what book. Now, of course, we haven't talked about date borrowed or date returned. We can do that in a future video. So for now, what I would like you to do is go away to your databases, build those three tables, add the two relationships that you should have, and then make it look really nice and really comfortable to use.